to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Except you reveal to us, O oh God, we cannot know. Except you show us, we cannot see. Except you guide us, we will not be accurate. Hallelujah. I'll share some more on Monday, but this word you see is the secret that makes men great. Every man is built by the word of God not just the word of god that is read but the word of god that is revealed by the wisdom of the spirit and received and tonight i i just want to talk along these lines and we'll just run through a few scriptures as i challenge you i i truly hope that someone will be angry with your current situation whether spiritually or whatever dimension and trust that tonight's teaching will help build you let's start with john chapter 8 john chapter 8 and verse 32 john chapter 8 and verse 32 in fact let's start from verse 30 we'll read from 30 to 32 30 to 32 he says as he spoke these words this is jesus now many believed on him that he won then said jesus to those jews which believed on him he said if you do what continue in my word then ye are my disciples indeed and then 32 says and ye shall know the truth you will know the truth by starting as you continue somewhere along the lines of your consistency you will encounter something remember the context is continuation not just starting to read not just a five minutes devotional not just a one month study it says if you continue in my word you are activating something that will cause you to eventually encounter the truth it says and if it is truth there is a character of truth it sets free meaning that if you claim to know the word and it still leaves you in bondage or in that situation then the truth of that word the final the uh, how, how do i how do i describe it now when the word of god is broken down the unit of it is truth the capacity to be set free from life's vicissitudes the capacity to not be under the limitations of life to rise by understanding and by the liberating power of truth he says if you continue meaning it will take a while he didn't lie to you he said if ye continue then you are my disciples then he says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free ladies and gentlemen there are many people around the world with scriptures with books with tapes with teachings attending seminars and all of them will tell you they have the word all of them will tell you they have the truth but we do not see that liberating power of the truth in their lives not their spiritual lives not their finances not their ministries they remain in bondage in spite of their supposed encounter with the word something is wrong if it is truth that you meet the bible says the truth shall make you 
make you like i say make food for me the food is not there you are going to enter a kitchen and make it happen the bible says the truth if encountered can make what does not exist in your life it it never said the truth will bring you freedom there is no freedom anywhere like like if i tell you make jollof rice for me as at the time i was speaking there's no jollof rice you will search it and not find it but i said make it are we together your intelligence can gather from any market and any location the cow the vegetables and then combine them in a way that after a few hours there you have plate what you are looking for is freedom but it's not available and then the bible says when you encounter the truth the truth knows what forces to bring together and then all of a sudden something that did not exist will now exist the truth shall make you free free from what free from poverty free from fear free from mediocrity are we together now so the problem usually is that we may have encountered the word but we have not encountered the truth let's talk about it in john chapter 18 please give us verse 33 and we're reading to verse 38 something happened between pilate and jesus please listen and learn the bible says pilate entered into the judgment hall again jesus is being judged now and called jesus and said unto him art thou the king of the jews pilate was asking a question next verse we are reading to 38 jesus answered him sayest thou this thing of thyself or did others tell it of thee that means pilate had an information people were murmuring it outside and he came in he said are you a king looking like this the king of the jews and then the next verse pilate answered am i a jew thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me what hast thou done 36 jesus answered listen my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then would my servants fight that i should not be delivered to the jews but now is my kingdom not from hence 37 he said pilate therefore said unto him art thou a king remember this is a battle of reality and information he's trying to verify something follow me closely thou sayest that i am a king to this end was i born for this cause came i into the world that i should bear witness unto what talk to me please that i should be a testifier of the truth everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice so he's talking of truth now next verse pilate said unto him a question that people never ask what is truth notice the moment pilate said what is truth jesus said i am a testament of the truth immediately he said i find in him no fault in other words because you are the truth you qualify to be free if it is truth it always sets men free are you getting what i'm saying now so jesus pilate confessed that because you are a testifier of the truth there is no reason why you should be in this situation when truth shows up no matter what it is it must let you go jesus's remaining there was because of his love for us but pilate said before all he said i find no fault in the truth that's the same way poverty can say i find no fault the truth has come i must give way this has come i must give way when the lord opened my eyes to this scripture i said my goodness everywhere jesus went that was a system of oppression it couldn't hold him for long because he was truth are we together they held him before a cliff he came out there was scarcity around the truth and the truth said no it shouldn't be and all of a sudden multiplication came because the truth was there are you getting what i'm saying now listen very carefully everywhere the truth went the ministry of that truth was to liberate was to set free when he got into your house no matter what it was that truth made men free 
he went to the house of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, come down. I'm coming to your house. And within minutes, because Zacchaeus hosted the truth, he was free. And thou shalt know the truth. If you ever host the truth, then the truth must make you free. Very powerful revelation. That means if we remain in bondage, the issue is not just Satan. The issue is that we may have been receiving scripture and Bible study, but the truth has not come. Because when the truth comes, the Bible says it makes you free. It fabricates freedom from wherever and ministers it to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Many people keep bragging around with their acquisition of scriptures and their criming of scriptures and their participating in teachings. Listen carefully. The truth is not just a right information. There are many right informations that are not the truth. You have to understand this. You only say an information is correct based on a reference. Unfortunately, the reference itself can be wrong. Are we together now? There is something that science, science has pieced together a body of facts. And whoever aligns with that body of fact with respect to science is walking in the version of the truth. Is that true? But science itself must be vetted by someone higher than it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Culturally speaking, there, are, there is a system of understanding and behavior built by culture. And to the degree to which you align with it, we say you are walking in the truth. So there is a lot of relativity when it has to do with the subject of truth. What is permissible to a person and within a context may not be permissible to another person within another context. But here's what Jesus said, I am the way, I am the the truth not a truth the truth that means i am the ultimate system of freedom and liberation an encounter with the truth makes men free if you claim to have knowledge of the word of god if you claim to have found something you think is true and it does not produce the requisite freedom then it is not the truth it may be something else. It may be a well-meaning information that is correct based on a historical system of agreement. They have agreed that whoever does it this way. I give you an instance. In our world today, if a woman just looks at herself and says, I want to get pregnant without a man, that is not true as far as the educated opinion of men is concerned. Is that true? But when the truth was ready to find expression, there was a system that was created that would have been told a lie by science. Be careful what you call true and false. There must be a reference because with respect to God, there are some things that are agreed as true by men. But then when it comes to God, God says, no way. Lazarus died. That was the truth. Based on what doctors like David and his colleagues would say, they had checked him and there was no pulse. It was over. But when the truth came, he said, what did you say? Three days, roll away the stone. This is the truth. If it is the truth, he sets men free. Are we together? They buried the truth and covered it in a grave. After three days, the grave opened and the truth came out. If it is truth, then it must set free. The question is, why are we still helplessly under so much bondage we pray we fast we sleep on our bibles we quote bibles we listen to tapes yet it looks like our situation is not even scared of our spiritual investments could it be that we are not encountering the truth 
Even before Pilate, the, proof, the truth prevailed. The moment Jesus said, look, leave the issue of king. I am truth. Pilate said, what is truth? And he said, this man is free. I may not understand what truth is, but I'm a victim of the effect of that truth. I must let you go. I must let you go. What if you knew the truth about your life and destiny? What if you knew the truth that you were not a victim of situations and circumstances? What if what they told you about your upbringing was a lie? It was culturally true, but from the reference of God is a lie. What if your past and what he told you were a lie with respect to God? A lie is not a wrong information. A lie is any information that was not brought from God. It's a lie. It doesn't matter how right it is. If it did not originate from God, then it's not true. Ah. Truth. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. 2 Timothy, when you read from verse 3 and verse, uh, chapter 3 and verse 7, the Bible talks about this group of people, zealous people like we are. It says that they are ever learning. Please look up. Ever learning, but never able. Learning does not guarantee an encounter with truth. That you are sitting with a Bible does not mean you are encountering truth. That you are sitting with a tape did you hear the testimony of the dear lady who was listening to the seven days um, prayer and fasting? She said she had been listening to it. Just because you started the tape, started and finished with your ear hearing it does not mean you can counter the truth. She said at that point, a prayer came and light opened. And all of a sudden she received. And the results showed immediately. A friend that had no business helping her. That's the truth making a way now. The truth always makes a way. Don't leave no uncle nonsense. You don't need. Once the truth comes, the truth will find a way around it. Because the truth is not just an information. The truth is also a person. So when the truth comes into the womb of a barren woman, what happens? The truth starts making a way. It finds out what is the issue first. And they said, ah, this woman has no womb. And the truth said, there is still a way. There is still a way. Prophesy to yourself and say, there is still a way. Look at the challenges that stand before you. That you cannot see a way does not mean there is no way. Just stop looking for a way. Let truth come. Truth knows where the way is. Ah! You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. With your power, you perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here only because you made. Sit down, let me tell you. There is no uncle anywhere who is going to help you. There is no... A, an uncle only helps when the truth makes him part of the actors of your breakthrough. Nobody just comes because he knows you. Ye shall know the truth. Many of us are trying to find ways and methods. Whereas the secret is to stay until the truth comes. When the truth comes, light must come. Let me show you something. Let me show you something that will bless you. What's, what's, the, what's the scripture now? Help me, Holy Spirit. Um, Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. Give us from verse 11 and 12. Isaiah 29, verse 11 and 12. Let me show you that just because you have a book called the Bible in your hand does not mean you have access to truth. Read it with me. He said, and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. It did one that is what? Learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot. Not because I can't open it. It is sealed. Sealed. Next verse. <laughs> and the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. 
both the educated and the uneducated stand helpless in the presence of this book where is the key how do men read it i thought by being learned i will automatically understand it this is not science the book is sealed there is a spirit with the key that opens it your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word i will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word i will forever sing your praise listen listen this book you see has written in it the codes of your destiny but it is always sealed i told you everything glorious is what covered no glorious thing is revealed you don't buy a product without a package so your destiny is there but it is sealed going to school is very important but when it comes to the matters of the spirit my brother my sister don't let the pride of education make a fool of your destiny that's why we have many intellectuals who brag and say what is god a can become c and they are trying to make c out of a forever whereas the maker is truth a foolish man can come with his foolishness and sincerity and say lord i i can't amount to much my life you see is a testament of this they are life to those who find them. When you find it, it looks like a charm. It's impossible for life to keep you down. This is not some bragging. No, if it is the truth, if you ever see a mountain start laughing, there must be a way. There must be a way. Pilate looked at Jesus and said, if you are a witness of the truth, then I find no fault. I'll let you go. Are you learning something tonight? It's not just opening the Bible and then reading, oh, James chapter this, the Bible said this, in the name of Jesus, I will never be. That's, that's just, that's, that's scripture. You are just playing games. Many of us keep flattering ourselves for many years, thinking, I'm not saying reading your Bible is not important. I have found the missing key why many well-meaning believers don't get results. They are not lazy. They are more serious than even some of us pastors. Take laziness out of the equation. Why is life hard for many people? What is the mystery of this hardship? Close heavens everywhere. No help, failure, pain. There is a, an explanation. The book that you have been reading is sealed. That you got a message from me to preach does not mean it has been open to you. No, sir. Have you ever opened a scripture and then you are reading, you've been reading it and all of a sudden you see something there that you never saw and then you can mark that day and say something shifted. That, that portion of scripture was open to you. I remember studying about the anointing for many years. I read books and books. A lot of people got their revelation from Good Morning Holy Spirit. You've never had me mention it because i didn't get anything from it i read it good morning holy spirit i was blessed but i didn't see anything there and i just stayed if you continue that's the key and then one day the portals when it opens it is open when jesus stood for to read in the temple the bible says they brought to him the scroll of isaiah it was open and he said this day you have been reading it and thinking it's some prophet somewhere but i am the manifestation of this brothers and sisters let me tell you this if we don't get serious with our lives to find truth we are going to keep convincing ourselves and jumping around quoting scriptures that for a very long time our lives will not capture the levels of freedom that befits one who claims to have that knowledge of truth i know many wonderful lovely men and women of god struggling around the ministry sincere they won't steal nothing they won't do anything notice that both the learned and the unlearned 
are still victims of the same thing. So what is the key? I will show you. <laughs> ah, I will show you. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 1 to 5. Note this. You know, there are many people who keep talking word of God, word of God, word of God. I, I don't have a problem with it. It is true. But we are missing something very vital. Vital. The book by itself is sealed. You will only read a, you will read stories from it. For this cause, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Uh-huh. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. What is the grace? How that what? Uh-huh. He made. Stop. He made. I didn't learn it. How that by revelation? He made. Who is the he? Someone came to me and opened the book. He made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. Verse 4. Whereby when ye read, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge. The basis of what you are reading is not just that I wrote. Someone came and opened something to me and I want to help you too. Because if all you do is to just read, you will not find anything. It says, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse 5. Which others which in other ages was not made known so this thing is made known it's not studied it's made known it's like occult it is made known if it has not been made known my brother my sister let me tell you you will fast and pray and never find it it is made known a man can receive nothing except it is given this is how we rest in the kingdom we keep struggling and thinking it's just by all of these things. No. Your press. And then he comes to make it known. If God does not make it known, you will never find it. It is so obvious, yet you will look and look and never find it. He says, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. As it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by who is the he talk to me who is the he so the he comes to you and says this book cannot open except i am there the book can give you the word but the spirit can show you the truth you need truth that's what you need you don't just need word like word like that. When you say this, many believers think you are encouraging people to not be serious about the word of God. Let me tell you in all honesty, I doubt, I, I doubt if I've seen any man that is more passionate about the word of God than me. There may be, but I've not seen one. But I found out that your life is going to be a chronicle of frustrations if you don't understand how truth comes out of the word. It says which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets jeremiah 33 please and verse 3 help us media jeremiah chapter 33 please read with me koinonia is projected inside and outside one to go uh-huh stop i will what i will what i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not doesn't matter how long you've been studying it he said you don't know it that's why the results are not speaking but when you call on to me i will answer and the answer is that i will come and i will show you brothers and sisters listen to me we have ignored the holy spirit and carried bibles all around hoping that just by reading it intellectually we'll be able to put a and b together and the bible tells us that the mysteries in this book are sealed that's why they are called mysteries when you read the bible outside of the ministry of the holy spirit 
all you will see is potentials for possibilities you will keep seeing them but your life will never never experience them one of the greatest secrets in my life is the ability to allow the holy spirit to open up scripture open up scripture open up scripture john chapter 16 please we'll begin our reading from verse 12. john chapter 16 we'll begin our reading from verse 12. read with me please one to read i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now why because you are natural and these things are spiritually discerned are we together verse 13 how be it when he the what the spirit of truth not just the holy ghost the spirit of truth is come what will he do please talk to me he will guide you through the book he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he will show you and you've seen it all through scripture people are shown things people are shown things if you are not shown anything you will continue bragging around with scripture and never have results your assignment is not just to sit down and read your bible religiously your assignment is among other things to cry for the manifestation of the spirit of truth all scripture was inspired by him he knows the codes that are enshrined in this book but it is sealed it will take hunger to cry for him but brothers and sisters when he comes and opens it to you you and all others will stand in awe of your destiny this is the mystery behind great men this is the mystery behind great destinies a spirit came to them and showed them things whether it is in the occult or in the faith life nobody rises without being shown things he must show you and i was taken in the spirit ezekiel and i was shown this what have you been shown or what have you been reading you have been reading in the name of jesus i will never be poor you have been reading he owns the cattle on a thousand hills you have been quoting it you have been doing everything but you are just reading potentials it is sealed when the spirit comes he will not quote the scripture he will show you the quote in the scripture when the holy spirit comes he will not tell you no 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 he will show you something that may not make sense for another person there's something god showed me about the anointing there's something god showed me about growth there's something god showed me about victory there's something god showed me on how to deal with enemies whatever is not shown you becomes the gate to your destruction you have to find out what you have not seen and cry with all your heart and say lord show me let me tell you how you know you have not sh shown you whenever you do what is supposed to be the obvious solution and it does not work then it means there is more there is more apostle i pay my tithe apostle i give apostle i'm a sincere man of god i study my bible all doors are closed there is something that has not been shown you let me use the example of our dear pastor did you think that all the people that rose up for him just came to asaba in the last two months were they always there so what happened why was the climate harsh over him look how well-meaning he is i've been to his meeting once an adorable man of god and his wife it's amazing how life does not give the excuse for you being sincere it doesn't say you are sincere and then no sincerity is not the seed for greatness you can be as sincere as possible and find out that you are a victim of everything bad you know pastors come to me and they say apostle I can stand before God and tell you I love God with all my heart. I say I'm a man of God. If you are lying, I will tell you. 
and then they now say apostle but why is life treating me this way like i told you was it last week or the week before last i begin to nod my head in pain because i know that um the solution is not just to pray there is something that they don't know and my brother my sister until this book is open to you and your eyes see your destiny will remain small we're all gathered today now scattered across inside and outside and those following online because god showed a man something your generation is dependent on what you see they are they are waiting earnestly to say man of god what has god shown you that you can bring to the table if all you are taking to destiny is your degree get set for a big shock if all you are taking is just your sincere heart get set for another shock if all you are taking is your uncles that you know my uncle somewhere my auntie somewhere no i don't study the bible to crime scriptures or to preach i search for light i search for truth there are very few people who ever know how i study the bible because if i teach you it will frustrate you i can stay on a scripture for a long time because there is something i'm searching god can show me like a code i can see half of the truth and see the other part two years later and until i see it i will wait but when that code comes pack 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 the seals are open and the results follow no devil stops it when when the seal is broken and open then your life will be a wonder even to you <laughs> favor is here but is sealed there is a mystery to it the anointing there is a mystery the helpers of your destiny are here the problem is not the book the problem is that it is sealed when you are not aware that the book is sealed then you are in trouble because you will continue to read how many churches have continued to read this every sunday sunday after sunday but there is no one to come to testify that this is what god has done please hear me i want you to learn some of you to take years to understand what i'm sharing with you as simple as it sounds your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real i testify your favor is real your power is real i testify when the lord gave me the revelation on the body of christ let me tell you this i didn't read it in any book i remember lying down like a child when the lord came with this scripture for this cause the lord began to teach me that there are four encounters the son the spirit the word and the body and that the reason why many people never rise in life is because they've had the three encounters but not the body i said so there is something called an encounter with the body and my life changed every true apostle of the lord must deliver a mystery to a generation there must be something god gives you by the spirit this is not just bible study it is that he comes to you he doesn't come to me every time but he comes i remember when god was delivering to me the secret of church growth i read i study i've studied young Gicho's materials studied bishop oyedepo's materials but here he comes the code for your own destiny given to you that someone else will do and will not work for him because it was open for you that's why you see people doing things that should not work but it works hmm. i'm doing my best to try to explain this thing to you sometimes it's very difficult to understand to explain spiritual things all you see is the result that follows but behind those results are strange encounters that walk together and they make a way they make a way brothers and sisters look at me i love you that's why i'm teaching this 
I can come and just talk to you and we laugh and joke. I am so passionate about your results. And the way many of us are going about it, you will never find it that way. I'm telling you this. I'm saving your life from frustration so that you will not jump like others have done for many years. And then one day you'll find out they are not even in the faith. And they say, don't bring any Jesus talk. I've tried him. It doesn't work. You only tried scripture. When you try the truth, sit back and watch it make a way. Strange ways in the wilderness. Ways that should not be there. The truth will cut a way out of a rock. The truth will cut a way out of a river. And you will cross and they will look back and not be able to find the way again. And they'll say, hey, Jimmy, what way did you follow? And you say, I don't know. The truth just made a way. The Egyptians tried to trace the way that the truth made for the Israelites. They couldn't find it. They drowned. The song of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. Even the horses and the rider has been thrown. The same way somebody passes is the same way that kills another person because it has to be a way made by the truth for you. Someone can do a business that lifts him and you do a business the one that kills you because he's sealed. It was not open for you. Someone can use the same word you are speaking to get favor. You will use it and get destruction because you are just speaking. Light of the world you step down into darkness. Open my hands, let me see. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Sing it one more time. You're the light of the world. Step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Listen. When you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you are in a position where you will remain in darkness forever. Jesus himself told us why he sent us the Spirit of truth. Not just to pray gibberish in tongues. No. The Holy Ghost was sent to us not to make us men of God. The Holy Ghost was sent to us not to make us pastors. The Holy Ghost was sent as the opener of the sealed book to guide you into all truth. The book is there, but it must be opened by the wisdom and the intelligence of one who is not human. He made known unto me. He made known unto me. He made known unto me. First Corinthians chapter 2. Please give it to us. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Read with me, please. Everyone is projected. Just read and then you write it down. One, two, read. Uh-huh. Not the spirit of the world. Stop. In any case, you must receive a spirit. So there is the spirit of the world that inspires men and opens codes for men based on the laws of life and they can manipulate it and get some results and God is saying so that when you are inspired you don't think it's the same thing that inspired someone somewhere there are two spirits there is the spirit of the world a man tells you he was just sitting down and he made a discovery it's a lie nobody makes a discovery a spirit comes to you and opens up a portal of a reality and then you quickly scrabble it and walk around it and the whole world marvels and they call you Albert Einstein and they call you Michael Faraday and they call you the Wright brothers the Bible is saying there is no such thing as just a human invention by yourself it's not true a spirit must come to you and open up what is sealed but the spirit which is of God. Why? That we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. There are things that are freely given. So says the book. But the spirit of God, the spirit of truth comes and opens you. So that you will now comprehend 
and then you walk in the reality the light of it and my brother my sister your life will suddenly change in a way and manner your family members will look at you and say what charm what did you touch look at this come promise if by next week promise suddenly enters a dimension of the anointing a dimension of revelation and let's assume five jeeps come from different people around the world and is parked in front of his house nobody will say promise so you are this hard working someone will call and say promise come where did you go to who did you meet we know that the arm of flesh cannot produce that result who assisted you just tell me and he'll say well it's a long story are you ready to do what i say i'm ready now it's okay meet me by 11 30. let's go to one corner somewhere so everyone knows you would be you would be unwise to see what god is doing through my life and this ministry and believe it's just hard work no no what more do you need to see to convince you no man can do these things except a spirit be with him with god all things are possible without him on your own there are things that are not possible many of us have been fighting alone do listen to what i'm telling you and you will watch your life change in a way that will surprise you i kept thinking about this and i said lord look at what you've done with my life all because i saw the holy ghost and i said holy spirit i am weak i am dull in myself i'm not condemning myself is the truth i am ignorant i may not even have the strength but if for any reason you can hold my hand i am available just that one decision turned my life around I shared with you about my dream and vision you will get it in different messages i can't remember when i preached exactly that i saw a whole generation of people crying and they were saying there was no food no water and i wanted to go and rescue them but i was weak in myself but then i was determined to go out the moment i stepped out there was a giant mighty man he just held my hands and said let's go And if our God is for us, then help me. Stop us. And if our God is with us, then what can stand? Sing one more time. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what Prophesy to yourself. For the last time now. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand? What does that sister? Catch what I teach you and watch your enemies criticize you and waste their time. There is nothing that can be done about a man who the Holy Ghost has held his hand. Nothing. It's too late once the holy ghost holds your hand and says let's go you will climb mountains and walk through valleys when the door settles you are still standing and you will say to you be all the glory and men will say how are you doing it it's not by charms it's not by brain work this is not a plus b no you see that i treasure the holy spirit so much to a point that many people just say oh this 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 spirit thing is too much just focus on the word you keep doing it that way and see whether your destiny will be open i believe in the word but the word is useless until the spirit breathes upon it he is the one who gives life to the word the first the first person of the godhead revealed was him not the word the word came after he was revealed in the beginning look at the order God created the heavens and the earth. 
we didn't have an opportunity to see how that happened in verse 2 there was darkness then the first of the godhead if he was the first in the creation of earth he must be the first in your life too he's showing you how to come out of chaos many of us just stand religiously acts chapter this john chapter this and we keep jumping around and the holy spirit says no it is sealed that's why an unbeliever will carry the bible and all he will see is a compendium of controversies you will see things that don't add up in scripture god saying this one and god saying another thing and saying uh -uh, god says doesn't lie see how many lies he made because you are reading what is sealed but when the spirit of truth comes he will open your eyes others are looking but you are seeing all of a sudden you will see something others are not seeing and then you will walk in a dimension they are not working in i cry to god and say lord this man is a weak man you have to help me and the lord said he will help me and all of a sudden my life changed i'm introducing to you not just a book you have it I'm introducing to you not just tongues you can pray in tongues I'm introducing to you not just God in you you have him in you I'm introducing to you what Yongicho will call Holy Spirit my senior partner if anyone ever tells you what is the secret behind Apostle's life if you say prayer you are lying if you say Bible study you are lying if you say worship you are lying if you say sacrifice you are lying all of those are secrets the greatest secret is that a weak man holds a strong God who makes that weak man a strong man that's what God can do that's what God can do the treasure that is in earthen vessel but held by a superior power that no force no cause no witch no devil can stop He told Joshua, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Brothers and sisters, don't you see? It? You have been trying in the flesh. You have been doing, oh, I, I think if I, if I buy one golf now and I do this and I understand this and that investment, I will rise. And the Holy Ghost just stands back and watches the ignorance. And you, I, I know, let me just get one golf. I will be getting 10, 10,000 every week. I'm a smart businessman. Then if I get another job in the bank as you are calculating it, I'm not saying those things are useless. But here he stands, the gentle spirit, watching your ignorance and your pride punish you how can you walk when you don't know the way of the way how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind power at work in you change Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little here, a little there. You know they Holy Ghost, you're the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God. Hey, you're the Holy Ghost, Center of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost, Seal of the Age to Come. You're changing. That's the secret no matter how dull you think you are no matter what village let them laugh at you while you walk many people laughed at me years ago for holding his hands they laughed and today they bury their head in shame for holding my hand the Holy Ghost is not a president of a nation the Holy Ghost is not the CEO of a bank 
The one who turned chaos in Genesis 1 verse 2 to light holds your hand and someone laughs at you what pride when he held my hands i knew nothing about the anointing when he held my hands i knew i had no zero wisdom you were better than me when he held my hands i wasn't as smart as you but i was stupid enough to hold him and say no matter what it is i hold your hands i hold your hands he will hold your hand as you go to the nations people will talk and say let's watch what will become of him and swallow their words after many years because there is a hand there is a grace he is the creative power behind this ministry the wisdom you see is not the wisdom of a man you will read books and read books and read books and be tired and never find it because it is a is sealed are we together sealed all of the things I do today about the anointing he taught me how could I have known how old am I aren't you seeing that what what is happening is more ancient ancient this is not the wisdom of a man Kadosh. Kadosh, you are mighty on for me to celebrate things like birthdays what what are you celebrating who are you really celebrating take him out of my life and the secret of a foolish man outside of him is revealed but when he stands with you thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph listen I say it again there is nothing you can do with a man that the Holy Ghost has held his hands. No, sir. No, sir. It's a grand formula for victory. When he came upon Jesus, he turned Jesus to Christos, the Christ. Jesus was just a carpenter's son. Just anyone on the street. But when the Holy Ghost came, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, when he comes to your business, he will change it in a way that will surprise you the spirit of truth when it comes to your ministry listen let me tell you this I never listen I never stop getting amazed at the formula people invent in hope that will work out whether for ministry or whatever I teach you principles here but principles will never replace presence principles only become useful when presence is intact god is not science listen oh brilliant people i may not be as smart as you and i beg your pardon but if it has to do with victory in this life someone must hold your hands and someone must show you the physical principle of fatherhood 
should teach us that you never rise alone someone must hold your hands and lift you we have ignored the holy spirit because of the embarrassment that follows walking with him oh i tell you there is big embarrassment walking with him because your way will not be the regular way of people because your life will not be within the context of others but if you can be foolish to still stay and say holy spirit where will i go to jesus said will you also go and they said to whom shall we go you alone have the keys i have watched people mock god i have they have not mocked god by mocking god directly they have mocked god by mocking his wisdom There are people looking for anointing, reading books, getting all kinds of formula, do A plus B, add C to it, then the power of God will move. Let me tell you this. I say this by the authority of the kingdom, you are wasting your time. God is not a herbalist. It's only a herbalist you can receive charm from without a relationship. But when it comes to God, he will not show you power first, he will reveal himself. Moses wanted to see his glory. He said, no, 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 Moses. I am that I am. Let's, let's discuss first. Every promise God made to me, I have watched it come to pass. As at the time he said it, I never knew how it would happen. But God, when he speaks, be foolish enough to believe that, Lord, you are able God is able to do strings just what he said he will do. He's got a fulfill every promise to not the Holy Ghost you are holding. Koinonia, hear me. I keep introducing him to you. Hold his hands and watch what he will make out of your life. Leave all the, the unwise people who keep mocking God. Just do A and B. C must happen. Who are you to make C happen? How old are you to make C happen? A plus B does not guarantee C in this life. The person to make C happen can die. But when God holds your hand, anything plus anything can become anything doesn't make sense look at this the dear pastor comes and all of a sudden a hand is laid on him it's not a hand that is laid on him it's more than a hand my brother if it's just laying on of hands you go and do it a hand is laid he carries that possibility enters a land that was not favoring him and all of a sudden things start changing i am a blessing to you and to the world today simply because of his ability to help me ebenezer is my testimony i am a man who has been helped by god helped in every way by god he said, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, with the enemies that fool the world, with the enemies of the gospel, where do you stand when God does not hold your hand? The results that we now celebrate, glory be to God, but they are products of Him. Listen, 
if you think good preaching is what is going to give you influence forever save Johnny I wish you the best of luck go and search the Bible and search history and find people like Alexander Doe who communicated mysteries that at the end of their lives they were almost committing suicide because even if knowledge abound they will cease knowledge will cease all of these things will cease but when you want to become indestructible in this life hold his hands and do what he tells you to do and walk with him don't command him and say holy spirit my boy go and bring me money that's what many of you are doing holy spirit my boy go and bring me my wife go and bring me my husband go and bring me members go and bring me prosperity and he says when i came to you was i a tenant or the landlord the word of god the holy ghost was given to us among other things to unseal this for many years i read my bible did you know for many years there were times that i would not even read my bible for a while i would just carry the devotional repent and read it do you know why many of you open the bible and it wearies you you are looking at it but you are reading something that is sealed that's why you cannot get life from it you will open today you don't know what to read no not when he's guiding you tonight we are going to pray we are going to take serious time to pray we are going to pray and embrace afresh his ministry in your life his person in your life he is the secret whether you are a businessman whether you are a husband you are a wife you are a man of god you are a woman of god the starting point of your victory is hinged on your passion and your love for him listen let me tell you this before we begin to pray listen to me carefully when i was writing the things that i now do that the holy spirit was revealing to me at a point in time I just sat down and I said Holy Spirit you must be joking is this it this foolish I think I'm smart the thing with God is the Spirit of God is very gentle the moment you begin to interrupt his wisdom with your I too know mentality he just steps back you do it your way go ahead and do it your way some things in our lives are not just an attack is us alone without him whether satan was existing or not is the same trouble you would have that is the natural consequence of ignoring him i love him so much koinonia is built on intimacy with the holy spirit he's the one who has given the word of god value look at what the messages are doing around the world do you think that is just because the message is so powerful no if he holds your hand he holds your finances he holds whatever comes from you someone called me the other day and said they were inside a taxi a cab and the cabman every time he picks you he, he, his own gift to you is that he will play one koinonia message i don't know the cabman and he just continued like that there are people who have met angels who gave them koinonia messages not human beings they entered meetings and gave them messages i i was i'm true to, to god i don't share all these testimonies i was told of someone who bought a memory card new memory card new brand new memory card slotted it in his phone and all he saw was koinonia message new memory card with seal seal he opened it i'm not lying to you a pastor from gambia a great a great a man of God from Gambia we spoke yesterday he said he was so depressed and he got to a point where he was washing plates in his house and he didn't know what to do and all of a sudden he said he, he just went on YouTube and how he got across one teaching and as soon as he got that one teaching his life changed he said by next Sunday 
the church changed and exploded he saw the manifestations of the spirit the word seeds were coming and he said who is this he introduced it to his wife the wife listened to the same message he did the wife didn't know the message he had listened to but she went to search on her own and listened to the same message you had the pastor that came last week from abuja just arriving here someone calls him to buy 300 shares it's not the work of a man no sir our parents are struggling now and suffering because they have embraced every other thing except him our our world is dying because we have ignored him don't join them don't join them to ignore him already your past the family background you came from is already a disadvantage on its own the only advantage in your life is him when you find him he will forget about your enemies forget about critics i'm telling you don't waste your time just leave all those things stay with him let him hold your hand my brother my sister and watch what he will do with your church and watch what he will do with your business and watch what he will do you may be crying while you are holding him i guarantee you the cry of pain will soon become the cry of joy you just hold his hands worship team hold his hands as you sing don't carry skill and a nice voice alone we live in a wicked world if all you carry is a nice voice you will not last one year human beings will suck you like an orange and throw you and look for the next happening thing but you remain fresh when you hold him impossible to be ignored impossible to be ignored he's gonna fulfill every My God is able. He truly is able. Listen. Look at me. In Nigeria today, an average young man cannot get established without some kind of bribe or some kind of things. To have to corner and lie and do something. You want to walk in integrity and righteousness the environment is already hostile against you the fact that you name the name of christ alone is trouble for you they will hate you at your workplace hate you everywhere what then is your advantage your advantage is not just the miracles that he brings the advantage is him if you can hold his hands and say holy spirit i am weak i confess my ignorance i don't know so much i know that if i try to be established my way the church will never grow the influence will never grow but i submit to you you are the fountain of wisdom you are the spirit of truth open up to me and then the holy ghost will say all right you step back and then he will show you a b c and your life changes you will stand as shocked as those looking at you and just nod your head and say god what are you doing i hardly share my testimonies i had to minimize it because of wisdom and so that it can encourage people to rise there are things brothers and sisters if i tell you some of you will not sleep i myself the recipient of that testimony sometimes i wake up in the night and just sit on my bed and say lord what is this what is this you are the mighty god hey.
that song had been in my spirit for throughout last week. I don't know how to sing. You're going to sing that song. After it, we are going to take our time and pray. Help us, please. Jesus asking for anything we are going to take our time and pray in the spirit one of the mysteries that we were given to accessing the mind of God is praying in the spirit I'd like you to take out time and just blast in tongues and pray seriously in the spirit lift your voice and begin to pray everywhere inside outside those online follow us as we pray Ricchetele che te che te va cosa, 
foolishness I come in with my limitations and I come to you you are the only one who can make meaning out of my life I come to you lift your voice and pray and cry cry ah. for his presence in your life get tired of things not working in your life and cry for his wisdom cry for his wisdom Rekete <laughs> Lord, I need you in my life. I need you in my life. I'm tired of making I'm tired of making I ask for your will. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Then the secret was revealed. Daniel did not find it. Then the secret was revealed. Then the secret was revealed. I don't know what area in your life you need to see the hand of God desperately. I like you to open your mouth and say, Lord, show me. There has to be a secret. Open up this scripture. Hey, open up this scripture. Show me the secret to the anointing. Show me to the secret to increase. The secret to ever increasing fire. The secret to spiritual power. The secret to influence. The secret to activating my destiny. Show me, O God. The book is sealed. Open my eyes. 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 What must I do to prosper? What must I do to rise? What is the key in the spirit? What is the key in the spirit? 
y parte de la cosa para que ni la talando y a papá la mamá cosa y a la mamá cosa la mamá listen look up when Jesus watch this when Jesus was transfigured he showed us the secret to his transfiguration by the appearance of two men the law and the prophet not just the law of old testament that if you want to be transfigured the principles of the kingdom and the ministry of the prophetic standing side by side like moses and the prophet becomes your key to rising when jesus was transfigured we saw two men elijah did not appear enoch did not appear because they were not responsible they were not the spiritual mysteries the bible says that moses moses stood on one side and elijah i meant to say sorry ezekiel and other prophets did not appear elijah was standing representing the prophetic moses was representing the law and he said the book that contains those laws don't let it depart he's showing you how to succeed jesus did not just rise like that the law not just the law of the old testament the precepts of god you can have all the principles but there is no prophetic voice and you remain there no glory You can do something that should prosper because there is obedience to principles but there is no voice it's like ingredients if you have rice you don't need as much tomato as you need rice but don't put the tomato and see you can't say you have jollof rice because of that small tomato including salt sometimes you you need one mutu of rice and then a few spoons of salt but you refuse to put that salt and see how it will mess up the whole food something you may be missing because your eyes have not been opened you've done everything but the last key to just strike it and open it that's what i keep doing all the time that's what i keep doing all the time when i speak over your life i'm not repeating myself when i speak over your life i'm standing to fulfill all righteousness in the spirit by the wisdom of the spirit i've taught you that jesus walked under a closed heaven for 30 years as the word of god until a prophet came to his life and spoke and baptized him immersed him and his heavens were open if jesus operated and opened heavens for 30 years till he met john the baptist in the spirit and power of elijah your destiny will close almost forever until there is a voice. Listen, listen. I want you to get to a point in your life where you no longer fight spiritual realities. The earlier you learn this, the better for you. Do it before you start having children. Do it before it gets too bad because darkness for sure is covering the earth and gross darkness the people but upon you the glory of God will continue to arise it's not just because you are a man of God we trade secrets in this kingdom to stand and one of it is the Holy Spirit holding you but not just holding you opening to you the mysteries of the kingdom continue to read your Bible but don't think you will find it just by reading you will get to a point where he will give you the eyes to see they are life to those who find them that means he's missing no until he opens it to you i found certain things in my life it was bishop oyedeko that shared with us that he found the key to kingdom prosperity and he spin round and shouted yay i can never be poor i'm sure people laughed at him but you found it if you found it you found it
I want you to succeed. I want you to excel. I'm showing you the precepts of the kingdom. Listen, take luck out of it. Don't call what you don't understand luck. That's arrogance. There is a very serious dynamic working that you are not aware does not mean nothing is being engaged. You will see what will begin to happen to your life shortly. When men say, why is it happening like this? Don't lie that you don't know what you did. Yes, it is, it is the Lord's doing. That's why it is marvelous. A man's doing cannot be marvelous in your eyes. A man's doing is natural. That's why I don't clap for you for walking. Because it's a man's doing. Men walk naturally, born again or not. But there are results that when we see, we know that this one is the finger of God. Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do this except God be with him. It's a message I want you to carry to everyone you love. Jesus said, come on to me. Are you seeing now? Come on. He, 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 does not wisdom cry? Come on to me. Why will you continue to suffer and struggle? Listen, I'm bringing us to a point where we fulfill Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not. He's giving you a word of caution. Oh wise man, lean not on your own understanding. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He said, be not wise in your own understanding, verse 7. He said, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It is because we are wise in our own understanding. If God does not lead me, I don't have where to go. I don't trust what I can do. I will mislead people with my ignorance. But when he comes, you can dare the unbearable. You can stand and look at Goliath and say, Goliath, you come against me with your bows and your spheres but I come against you in the name of the Lord God the captain of the host of heaven whom you have defied and Goliath you don't mind him while he's talking am I a dog that you are coming with a sling say just keep watching it's the same way God can give you an instruction by the Holy Ghost you've been dancing all the time but the Holy Ghost will wake you by two and say just dance to 230 it's not the ordinary dance you just finished dancing. That dance will give you twins. That dance will give you an estate. And if people ask you, how did you get it? You say, I dance. They say, please don't turn us into idiots. How did you get it? I know you did all those church things. I said, well, should I lie? I'm telling you how I did it. The mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. I want to release my faith with you in one minute I want you to be sensitive to from today till Sunday but I want you to ask the Lord for three major things that you want to see done in your life things that don't ask for small things carnal things ask for something that is destiny shifting ask for something that that is able you know Elisha had no business Gehazi had no business ha having his eyes open. But when he was close to Elisha the prophet, he said, I'm not seeing what you are seeing. And he said, okay, let me make your eyes see. He didn't say just, mm, take advantage of my spiritual climate and see what I'm seeing. A man came in the midst of Samuel where a prophet was. And all of a sudden the hand of God was upon him. He prophesied naked from morning till night. Not because he had been praying and fasting. People have prophetic implications. Everybody walks with the spiritual climate that they carry. I want you to be humble enough to pray and ask God. Some of you is your family. You are crying for an intervention that must step in. I'm going to give you the next let's use the next five minutes i truly am going to be interceding for you i'm not praying for myself i just want you to pray and agree lift your voice and pray don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time go ahead and pray
Hallelujah. Listen. You are going to pray, but many of you, I, I'm, you're not, you're not, it's not the zest of prayer. Let me tell you something. They met the disciples of Jesus and said, why don't these guys fast? We are fasting and these guys are eating. Yet they are getting the results we are not getting. And Jesus said, for as long as the bridegroom is there. So there is something the presence of the bridegroom can do. There is an advantage you can take. The bridegroom is the one who the marriage feast is for. Are we together now? The covenant of the marriage is with the bridegroom. But because you are supporting through a covenant of alignment, he's saying there are some things that you may not need to do when the bridegroom is not there. In other words, I'm not ignoring that principle. It is what you should have done except for the fact that another presence was introduced that can immune you from it. I needed to share that scripture just to help you. There are some things that ordinarily that's the way you are supposed to do. But God brings men to your life that you can take advantage of and expedite your journey. Ordinarily, the disciples were to fast. Jesus said, I'm not fighting fasting. They will fast one day. But for now, as long as I am here, uh -uh. there are people that when you are around, I know people that just because you are around them, you may never need, read any book on finances. I'm telling you sincerely. Except you just want to add to your knowledge. The least, the, their, their greatest state is still higher than your greatest dream. Their presence. If you meet Prince Charles and Prince Harry and say, I just got you a book on five levels of wealth. He will congratulate you for being that courageous to enter the Buckingham Palace and say, walk out of this place. Do you know why? Because as long as they are in the palace, if they are out of the palace, they will do a lot of reading. But as long as they are in the palace, I teach you mysteries. Always find out what advantage you have based on who you are connected to. Not just God alone. There are some things you are doing that if you have knowledge, you should not be doing. You should have, others may be doing it. If I'm a pastor in living faith today, uh, there are some things I should not do. If I'm a pastor in MFM today and I have problem with my prayer life, I think something is wrong. There is a grace I should drink from freely. If I'm not a pastor in that place, I may need to dissipate some energy. But when God calls men, he calls men with certain possibilities. And when you come within that covering, that thing should work for you. I keep drumming this thing, but many people don't get it. It's true. It's true. Find out those who are genuinely connected to this anointing. There are things they, before they even learned the principle, the result was already speaking. It's true. As long as the bridegroom is there, you are immune. When the bridegroom leaves, so you can learn the principle so that you are not just dependent helplessly on the bridegroom. But you can take advantage of the presence of the bridegroom. You can carry a handkerchief from Benny Hinn and put in your pocket and enter a meeting and be surprised yourself at what is happening. Simply because you made contact. Do you not see that God will be wicked to allow you pray for everything? No. No. I don't pray for everything in my life. There are things that you can get. Jacob and Esau, those two guys, they were not praying for the blessing. They were connected to a lineage that had it. The father didn't say, okay, you guys, he said, just go and make me venison. Let me release something on you. Look at this. Esau did not receive the blessing, yet see the prosperity that came. The fact that he came out physically, that's why Ishmael today, Will the residue of that prophecy must always follow him. There are things that should happen in your life. My brother, my sister, there are some things that God has done for you already. Walking, trying to save yourself from sin by your strength is unnecessary. It was done by those who the bridegroom did not come for. So they use the blood of bulls. But now Christ has come. And that sacrifice that you just received. That's the same way there are other things that has been done. He gave gifts to men.
to ease their journey there are things in life are you ready to pray our time is gone i want you to open your mouth and pray pray unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come Bible says he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet he shall receive a prophet's reward he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man he shall receive a righteous man's reward Pray. Shapakoto sobrata kashubi adabaladaba. The Bible says, "May the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Send thee help from Zion." Abalado sada bakato she adabalakotiya. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many do sleep. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many do sleep. Pray believing. Pray believing. for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do set our hearts on you so you will do what you do we're in a moon This is a moon. We need a moon. We're in a moon. So here's where I start my journey. I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Congratulations. Let's do a recap on what I taught you the last time. That the greatest need of an unbeliever is what? salvation if you buy a house for an unbeliever you feed him well done but it will not take him to heaven the greatest need anytime you see an unbeliever the greatest need for that unbeliever is salvation is that true he has passed the first gate when he comes to the second gate he is now saved is that true what is the greatest need for a believer transformation what is transformation the process that makes you like christ in experience transformation is the name given to the process that makes you like christ in experience in all his power in all his glory the fullness of himself transformation how do you know you are transformed when your thinking and your understanding and your belief systems begin to subscribe to the word of god that's how you measure transformation you don't measure transformation by the vastness of information you are receiving you can receive many useless spiritual information doesn't mean you are transformed 
you have to gauge your transition based on the reference of scripture to what degree has your entire life submitted to the ways of god in experience that is the degree to which you are transformed so the greatest need of a believer is transformation and can i tell you it takes a long time of partnership with the holy spirit and the word to bring transformation this is the probably the hardest of a believer's journey to a life of excellence and a life that represents the purposes of god transformation in one minute you can be saved do you agree with me because it's not something you did on your own part the moment you accept jesus christ the bible says that you are saved so it does not take anything to be saved but i wish transformation you just say lord i believe i'm transformed then you jump no transformation is a long period for many it would take decades the first thing that happens maybe i should digress a bit and explain to you how transformation happens the first thing that happens is not receiving new information the first thing that happens is deconstructing the negative devilish ideas that have come from culture that have come from our pasts that have come from the limitations of territory and do you know why it's difficult because you will not want to leave it that's all you've known all your life so now when the holy spirit brings a superior proposition to your life how then do you give up what you've held all your life you were trained based on that knowledge you have lived based on that knowledge it's called status quo you have developed a system of comfort now here comes the word of god proposing to you a superior idea higher than all you've known higher than all you've learned it's not something you it takes a level of yieldedness you see that and because god will not usurp your will even though he's god almighty he will not veto and say whether you like it or not he will move at the pace of your cooperation is that true so he begins to expose to you god's ways in the area of spiritual growth he shows you how this thing happens in the kingdom now he teaches you about purpose and destiny now he teaches you about finances now he teaches you about your family he teaches you about the reality of demons the realm of the spirit i set before you life and what death i set before you blessing and cursing you would think it should be obvious that any right thinking person should naturally think pick blessings but it's not so not so not so it's like I drop um, a plate of food is that true and I drop poison and I say pick one you will think it should be very natural to come and pick a plate of food you try it and see the options that people will choose you don't choose with your hands you choose with your mind your hand only obeys what your mind has chosen your body only gravitates towards the direction of your belief system you have to understand that the body is an executor of your belief systems the body moves to honor your belief system if your body moves left it was your belief system that brought it there if your body moves right it was your belief system that moved it there if you are poor and broke and suffering it's not your job it's not your hands it's your mind that kept it that way if you are experiencing the favor of god and the goodness of god it was your mind in partnership with the holy spirit if you live an excelling life it's the spirit of god in partnership with your mind are you following please this is very important so it says if these things be in you and abound and stay why because remember in the parable of the sower satan was watching as god was about to sow seeds the seed the bible says is the heart of man is that true i mean the seed is the word the soil the heart of man 
so when the word is about to come don't think you are the only one paying attention satan is also paying attention what information is god bringing to your destiny he's bringing an information that passion towards god provides profit for your destiny he listens as soon as that word drops immediately he will come and attempt to pick it let me tell you how you know that there have been seeds that the devil has been picking in your life ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth have you seen people like that no matter what you want to talk about i know genesis chapter ah 1 verse 28 deuteronomy 8 verse 18 joshua 1 verse 8 john 1 5 i know in fact from he's not only he's going to go to he'll see 4 6 just be watching the question is what is happening to your life now listen you can stand with the truth and it is up to you to know what to do with it there are people who allow the truth change them like john there are people who were afraid of the truth and ran away like peter there are those who were making money out of the truth rather than being changed by it like judas it is your choice to know what to do with the truth some make money out of it others run away from it because of the hardness of the truth is that true but others allow themselves to be changed by it so tonight very briefly we have a few minutes and this will be will begin today and then we'll wrap up tomorrow why do i take this time to come and spend two days to teach number one because it's a spiritual responsibility number two it is a communication of my passion my love for you and my sincere desire to see everyone rise beyond the limitations that have come as a result of background you see that once people are exposed to an atmosphere of truth they become dangerous people positively speaking just pick anybody whether a villager whether whatever it is comes from a hamlet comes from a city comes from wherever you just keep the people and expose them to truth and let their hearts be open and i show you a people like like an arrow that is being sharpened ready to be shot from the quiver of a professional it does not matter any nation any tribe any tongue i have preached this a thousand times that the difference between any two people the difference between the quality of their life and the degree to which their lives are able to excel and serve the purposes of the kingdom is not the love of god for the same lord is rich unto all god loves an american the way he loves an european he loves an asian the way he loves someone in zaria or nigeria or any village somewhere across the world there is no problem about the love of god the difference is number one access to light the difference between any two people the difference between you and the person you admire the difference between you and your future is number one the level of methodical approach to light spiritual illumination alongside the corresponding transformation that comes from that light that is the first difference number two the level of relationships that come in honor of that transformed version of you because there are relationships that honor transformation is that true yes so your connections change to match your transformation and gives you a higher leverage towards life and destiny and then number three the kind and the dimension of grace that is at work in your life this is what differentiates people that's it if you put a dead body from america you put another dead body from europe you put a dead body from high in the world. you put a dead body from your village or my village you put a dead body from one african nation you don't call it a white dead body you don't call it a black dead body you don't call it an european dead body no they are all 
dead bodies is that true so the difference is not the color of skin the difference is not even just the privileges that people have with respect to what God provides those things are inconsequential it doesn't matter how you start there is a provision where you can rise and you can catch up do you believe what I'm sharing with you yes sir But we do not just rise by intention. It takes more than intention. It takes light. Arise, shine. Isaiah 60 and verse 1. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. So let's touch on just a very simple word. We'll be here for just a few minutes and then we'll wrap up for tonight. Pray in the spirit in one minute. And ask the Lord to open your eyes. Every opportunity to learn is an opportunity to rise. Lord, I am ready to rise. Leaving this old level to a higher one. Are you praying? The hearing ear, O oh God, and the seeing eye. In the name of Jesus, transit me by your word. Transit me by your power. In Jesus' name, it is written, part one, Matthew chapter four and verse four, while considering the topic, it is written, exploring the power that is in the word of God and also exploring the dynamics of engaging the word of God for profitable living it is written matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 but he the he there being jesus this was the story of his temptation remember when he was driven by the spirit the bible declares he went and fasted for 40 days and night and afterwards he was unhungered the bible says and satan came to tempt him and he said if you are the son of God turn this stone to bread and Jesus replied it is written do you know why it was written so that it cannot be changed it is an ordinance it is a law that man this is not applicable to angels it is written man shall not live wow the first time we see from scripture that jesus is talking about living pay attention now he's talking about living not just life he's talking about living and according to scripture that's what we call the law of first mention is that true that the first the context with which a word is introduced or a particular personality introduces that word that becomes the context that you will use except otherwise when it now becomes a prophetic statement so jesus is now talking about living the first recommendation he's giving us towards living he says man shall not live by bread alone that means the quality of your life in this kingdom is not just dependent on the food that you eat. He's not just talking of the Old Testament and all of that. No, 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 no. He was very direct. Bread. A typology of food. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. How many words? Every, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God including the one you are hearing every word that proceeds from the mouth of God has capacity to improve my living every word that proceeds from the mouth of God has capacity to improve my living the life we have been called into is a life of victory and a life of glory please listen to me believers make sure that on no account for as long as you live would you ever accept a defeated life 
make sure on no account no matter what has happened is happening or will ever happen in your life i want you to settle it in your life that you have been called to a life of glory and a life of excellence this is true from scripture he brought many sons by his death to glory john chapter 10 and verse 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy he says but i am come this is why i came that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly jesus is speaking now the thief comes to steal the thief does not come to advise the thief does not come to suggest the thief does not come to partner anytime you see him he has the singular assignment of stealing killing and destruction but jesus said i am come anytime you see me i am come who is the i the word every time the word comes it comes to give you life and it comes to give you abundant life that means don't fight it and don't be afraid every time you see the word coming it comes to give life and it comes to give abundant life we have been called to a life of victory we have been called to a life of glory now thanks be to god which causes us to triumph always do you believe this yes once you are believing this your destiny may not look like it once you are believing this your finances may not look like it once you are believing it whilst you are believing this the call of god upon your life may not even look like it but let god be true and every man including your situation a liar no vision speaks at the beginning the vision speaks in the end so it's up to you to believe regardless my background regardless the limitations around my life or otherwise i believe that in the name of jesus i have been called into a life of victory you have to believe this it looks very basic this is why many people keep losing in life because if the foundation be destroyed doesn't matter what you build on it we have been called into a life of victory so that even whilst you see temporal struggles, whilst you see temporal failures, whilst you see temporal setbacks, you do not let those things deter you because you have been called into a life of victory. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. The Bible says we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. But accessing and walking in the reality of that experience depends on your encounter with the word of god accessing and walking in the reality of this victorious life that you have been called to live it does not just depend on the love of god his love is not in doubt it depends on your encounter with the word of god the logos of god so i may be called to be a mighty man of god I may be called to be a mighty kingdom financier i may be called to be a mighty leader a politician a great businessman i may be called and raised by god to be the solution to the challenge of your family or whatever problem just believing and knowing that god has singled you out does not mean you will live a victorious life you must encounter the word of god and this is our assignment tonight i want to show you a bit as a way of recap what is contained in the word of god then i now show you the dynamics of engaging the word for victory because many believers know the potency that is in the world but many believers do not know how to engage the word you know that if you are to make rice you are to cook rice maybe fried rice no no let me call something easier that i think i know what and what what is easier than fried rice? He says spaghetti. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But are we still together? So let's assume that you want to cook rice, fried rice or whatever it is. Is that true? Just knowing the ingredients 
does not mean you will produce a good meal is that true even if you don't know the ingredients they can help you to buy it it is the combination that is the difference between a chef a chef does not bring anything necessarily strange it is the same thing you have been using but it is how he uses it ha! the same scripture you have been quoting the same bible you are holding is what someone is using to produce extraordinary results it is not that there's another verse that is given and say you just hide and i'll give you this verse no it is the same verse it is the same prayer is the same god is the same angels is the same holy ghost is the same wicked man is the same planet earth your result depends on your understanding the dynamics of engaging the word there is nothing that is particularly new or unique for you no it is your understanding of the word of god that creates your difference write this down what is in the word of god or what is the word of god i'll give you three points and then we'll begin to deal a bit in some other matters of the word number one i have taught you here and, I'm, and let me recap that the word of god is an expression of god himself write it down the word of god is an expression of god himself john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the word was god so the word is an expression of god himself revelation chapter 19 and verse 13 revelations 19 and verse 13 talking about the rider upon the white horse he says and he was clothed with a vesture that was dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god so the word of god is not just a book the word of god is a person jesus the christ of god is called the word of god first john chapter 1 and verse 2 first john chapter 1 and verse 2 it says for the life was manifested and we have seen it and we bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifest unto us when you read from verse 1 to 2 it tells you how that this life was the word of god that word that became life and is now manifest to us so the word of god is an expression of god himself but more more um would i say in a greater sense the word of god is an expression of god's thoughts and god's character the word of god that's the first thing we are still on point one yes it is an expression of god but in 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 a greater detail it is an expression of god's thoughts and god's character comes from the word logos the thoughts of a man that seeks expression the word of god contains the thoughts of god contains the character of god number two the word of god represents listen now this is a very serious one the word of god represents the boundary of god's commitment to the believer the word of god represents the boundary of god's commitment please write it and look up the word of god represents the boundary of god's commitment to the believer let me have your attention please please look at this stage if you can whatever you can see there if i tell you come and show me the boundary of this stage you will be right by standing here is that true and you'll be right by standing here that means anywhere outside of this place you are not on the stage again is that true it cannot be said you are on the stage right here i can't be standing there and say i'm on the stage so this is the boundary of the stage that's how the word of god is you know the word of god tells you how far god can be committed to you he can never be committed to the saints outside of the jurisdiction of his word 
so it is profitless to attempt to do business with god outside of the scope of his word his very nature does not allow him to cooperate with you if at all you will experience anything outside of the boundary of god's word is his mercy to bring you back to the boundary of his word but it is within the boundary of scripture that you can walk with god do you know why this is important because in an attempt to excel in an attempt to live a profitable life the bible tells us there is a way that seemeth right unto a man i hope you know that there are different methods that people are inventing there is the one that came from demons there is the one that came from culture there is the one that came from the pride of men there is the one that came from the ignorance of men there is the one that came from imbalance of men all of these roads all attempt and propose to you a great future can i tell you this as powerful and well-meaning as the communicators of these truths might be it is only the dimension that is within the scope of the word that can secure god's commitment i give you an instance and i'm i'm, I'm saying this because i'm teaching us this is home kenneth copeland right from the days of his youth he found in scripture from kenneth hagin and the rest the power of faith and its ability to provide victory in the life of a believer and that it comes by believing and engaging the word that was his conviction and he would speak the word in a very childlike way is that true and continue to speak the word oh in the name of jesus i am healthy i am sound i am whole i will live long i will live 120 years and he keeps speaking and it looked childish when he began to say it, there were many people who said this thing is too childish there are other advanced ways we have found and he told them you people will all fade away and i will remain because not because i trust myself i know that this is true when he started this he was kenneth e higgins pilot this man is in his 80s today his eyes are still 2020 vision he is still standing strong blessed his wife is still by his side every one of his children is born again they are born again filled with the holy ghost serving in ministry successful themselves and he's still saying what he said when he was wrong i am blessed he had he had even gotten the last time i heard him speak he had already gotten the year he will pass on he has chosen the year because he believes that he has the power to choose it so he chose it and he announced it to everybody that it will not be less than this no matter what your fears are a man who started saying something from his 20s and he's now getting close to 90 and he's still speaking it would be stupid for anybody to believe that that person does not know what he's doing we sell drugs that are 45 percent chance of working and we believe them we sell something that is 80 we say this thing is 65 percent chance that your headache will go away and you still believe it and here is something that has been proven through decades be careful what you call basic be careful what you call advance the moment it steps out of the boundary of the word of god you may be impressed with what you are doing but i tell you you will waste your time have you seen students that the teacher will give an example list six things and the person will list only two and explain them and at the end of it you will get two because you were asked to list and the mark allocated for listing six was six they did not ask you to explain you listed two and thought it will cover for the remaining four you don't know and you explain them pto you turn your page you wrote again at the end of it the man who said this is wonderful but you scored two that is how listen listen i know this is funny but i want you to pay attention to what i'm telling you because you see you will come in with our myriad of pride on what we think is the formula when the fire of god blows through it it's only what is consistent with the word that will be left and for many people they are building chaff 
convictions that will not stand the test of time I am praying that somehow you will believe what I am teaching you and God is coming to bridge any possibility for wasting your time and your destiny so that you could not drive yourself puffed up in knowledge I know this this is should be the way no listen when it was time for all the ladies remember in the book of Esther they gathered plenty ladies and the king was going to choose a wife I'm sure all the women were rehearsing what do you think the king would like and a particular woman said this man is the one who keeps the king's women he should know something he said sir what do you think the king would like and he said you're a wise woman you're a villager but you're on your way to go come let me tell you do this that and that so you come to god and say lord what does it take to excel and he says come let me show you do this that and he said no i i don't trust you i i think i need to add 10 more things and God is saying, who is the one who prospers? I am setting an exam for you. And by reason of relationship, I have told you, this is what to answer so that I will pass you. Because I so want you to, go, to move forward. And you left what I taught you and you are reading something else. And then you get zero. It's not my fault. I did my best to help you. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Listen, there are people today who desire to walk in the anointing. They desire to walk in spiritual power, genuine spiritual power. But you will be amazed to know how many formulas in the body of Christ have been invented that makes for power. And yet, while we keep doing those things, the sick are still sick. Out of 10 people on wheelchairs, only one person gets up. But there were men like T.L. Osborne. There were men who went from Africa to any nation. They reproduced that result. And they wrote books. They wrote truths. It is true that knowledge is progressive, but you must build on what has worked. Listen. Listen. In the school of the spirit, there are no inventors. It's a relay. You, you, the, the first law of impartation and followership is to honor the results that are before you. It is pride to ignore what has worked before you. Even if you build upon it, honor it first. It takes a professor to make a master student become a doctor. He will one day be a professor, but in the interim, if you ignore that man, you will never have that PhD. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? Follow them who through faith and patience have obtained have obtained what did they do with demons demons is not today demons started oppressing us what happened to tl osborne when he came to africa that we have not even received the gospel what happened to reinhard bonke as he traveled from place to place he went to places where they gave him charms he held it and destroyed it and went back home and slept sound there was no day that he did not get up and go for a crusade and say because demons attacked him there was something he believed today with all the exegesis and volumes of teachings about deliverance volumes of teachings about whatever demons still oppress us after that meeting volumes of teachings about this we go back and we preach on crusade grounds God is able to do this and while we do it the sick are saying now nah, I believe you all oh, those guys were powerful my goodness my God I had the privilege to be in a Reinhard Bonke crusade at close proximity and I looked at the man from head to toe there was really nothing there but there was everything there in the name of Jesus Christ blind eyes open wheelchairs and you are hearing shouts as if they are fighting as if it's riots celebrating all kinds of things you will see people rise up from wheelchair who you know medically speaking even if they are up the way their legs shrunk it should not take the size of their bodies go and read the books of tl osborne 
and see the kinds of miracles these people did or this issue of growing out legs and hands that people are just making a joke out of these were the guys that introduced these dimensions to the body of Christ today they have joined the cloud of witnesses but they left us what God taught them and we say nonsense don't mind them it was it was Kenneth Cope Kenneth E. Hagin and Ora Roberts he built Ora Roberts University today after many years it is still standing you enter into that institution you will be afraid you will see a hand praying there is a fire burning from an altitude to tell you that the fire on your altar should remain there are all kinds of emblems those who have been students of these people we are seeing the results we are producing those who have refused to be students and rather inventors are still gallivanting around the world of relevance There are research institutes and there are inventions that happen in those research institutes but before the researchers get to that point they are trained by those who have obtained is that true when they become co-competent personalities then on the strength of their qualification they can now begin to dig further do not trust any new invention until you see how much the individual honored what he met do not trust any new revelation until you see what the individuals did with what they found. If I teach you something new and something advanced, find out what was my honor for what worked already. Today, there are all kinds of inventions that we have, planes, but they are not with dishonor to the right brothers. It is an improvement from the foundation of what they did, we can now build upon and rise. The word of, of God, God represents, represents the boundary of God's commitment. Can, Can I, tell I tell you this? Heaven, heaven and earth will pass away. Babies, babies will, will become teenagers. Teenagers, teenagers will, will become adolescents. Young, young adults. Midlife and they will become elders. The word of God remains. You will waste your destiny trying to invent a will again. The will has already been invented. It says Jeremiah 6.16. Give it to us please. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Please give it to us. Jeremiah 6, 16. He said, Stand, thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Just because it is old, does not mean that it has stopped being a good way. He says, And walk therein, and ye shall find what? Rest. For your souls my precious people look at me there is a path that leads to victory there is a path that leads to genuine wealth and prosperity that you will lay up gold as dust and not know what to do with it and yet your heart is still inclined to God this life of beating left right and center hustling trying to make ends meet why don't you pay attention and listen to the one who invented the way you are not the first to seek establishment you are not the first to want to do something about your life you are not the first to want to do ministry you are not the first to look for the anointing the bible and history is full of men you were born in a christian family in the bible here there were people who were born idol worshippers and yet they navigated their way until they became custodians of the promise the things that are written aforetime they are for our learning so that we through the uh, how does he put it now the comfort of scripture might find hope how did abraham who came from all of the chaldeans as an idol worshipper what path did he take that later got him at the end of the story we see an exalted man who has now become the custodian of the blessing that he became God's idea of what it means to be blessed to the point that in Isaiah chapter 51 here's what he said verse 1 and 2 it says look unto Abraham your father he is my recommendation 
on how I transit people through my word to a life of excellence. Abraham. And to Sarai that bore you, for I call him alone. I blessed him and I increased him. Is God speaking to us now? This is very powerful. Pay attention to God's word. Do not try to invent your way. Submit to the word of God. If the word of God tells you this is how to get results, obey that word. Let me tell you this. If I ask all of you right now, write a prayer request here. And I promise you that anything you write will come to pass. And somehow you believe it is true. More than 80, if not 90% of the prayer request will be around the area of finances. Lord help us. Is that true? The way these times are now, they are not really funny. I want to serve you, but this thing is not allowing me to serve you. You see, you are already even laughing as I'm saying it. And then number two, for many people, maybe area of purpose. I want to find my place in life. I'm confused. All of these things have been answered already. They've been answered already. There is a way that it works in this kingdom. But you must walk in keeping with the boundary of scripture. That way you can guarantee that in the name of the Lord, I will come into the fullness of what God has said for me. Can I tell you this? You listen to what I'm teaching you by the word. You will step into levels of anointing that you never believed you will step into. You will step into levels of power. You will dumbfound principalities and powers. Because I told you it is a journey. For a long time it will not look like it. For a long time it will not look like it. But can I tell you this? If you submit yourself to it. Meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear unto all number three is God helping us the Word of God is a revelation of God's system of operation It's called the wisdom of God the Word of God is a revelation of his system of operation how we obtain results in this kingdom the Word of God reveals to us how results happen not just that results happen it shows us how they happen again back to cooking there are books that they sell around that teach you how to cook in case you cannot cook is that true and the book the people are careful enough at the back of that book the people may write their qualification oh this one attended this school the attended this one this one so you know that the person you are dealing with is credible then you now turn to page one pounded yam right and vegetable soup this is how you make it happen page two you want all kinds of um, European cuisines and the rest they will teach you how to do it your job is to trust the people don't just look at it as if these people don't know what they are doing what have you cooked first are you seeing that now yes. the book does not just show you it shows you the finished product but then it tells you this is what to do step one do this while you are arguing there say no i know my own way you will still not be able to get it somebody will come with childlike faith and just say i will follow this to the letter step one do this for five minutes you will do it at least let me try it and let it fail step two do it step three now you can add this one now you can add this one and eventually the food the the aroma now starts becoming like the one that he smells somewhere and he says this thing is working and now you add this one you add this one at the end of it he may not quite get it 100%, but at least he's impressed. Next tomorrow, he will do it again. A day will come, he will not need to use the book because the book has entered him. He does not ignore the book. And then one day, he can sit down and say, Wow, I appreciate this person, but there is something I've learned. 
between this and this the person did not see this but in honor to him now we can improve on it there is something you can introduce in that food are you seeing now so you are improving but not in dishonor to what you met what you met brought you thus far and then the holy ghost in honor of your submission to that truth will now open your eyes to see listen i have told you our children will edit what we now call revelation of our age but if they ignore what we are teaching they will be surprised that they will remain in our yesterday even though they are our future if they listen one day they'll be listening to a koinonia message and i'll be preaching so powerfully and the holy ghost will tell them you see this man did his best with the grace he was given but between this mystery and this mystery he didn't see this one now because you have submitted to honor it let me show you something and it will show you their own message now becomes the improvement of our own are you seeing it now yes a revelation of god's word write this down i've taught you but let's deal with it quickly the word of god contains three things number one promises number two principles number three prophecies the word of god essentially contains three things number one promises don't forget number two principles number three prophecies what are promises god's commitment if you will do this this is what i will do this is my intention for you if you walk in keeping with the conditions that make this manifest write this down you only commit God's integrity to perform when you walk in keeping with his promises and his principles you only commit God's integrity to perform when you walk in keeping with his promises and his principles that means that god loves you but the only way to commit god in your life is when you walk in keeping with his promises and his principles now listen how do we engage the word for victory this is what i want to show you now briefly and then we'll wrap up for tonight's session please pay attention because this is where many of us may not understand you understand these things i've shared so far but the missing link for many of us can be translating the word of god into that experiential manifestation the bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among us and we beheld that means it should not just remain a mystery in the realm of the spirit it should translate into the quality of your health it should translate into the quality of your prosperity the quality of your spiritual life the quality of your advancement in life are we together number one the first key when you want to engage the word of god pay attention please when you want to engage the word of god for victory your first assignment is to find scriptures find scriptures that apply to your areas of concern find scriptures that apply to your area of concern apostle it looks like all doors are closed it looks like nothing is working in my life every door I try to open is closed so your journey with the spirit Go and find from scripture where were closed doors open in the Bible. Are you seeing now? The formula behind the story of that closed door. I taught you that the Bible does not profit you until you find the mystery behind the stories. Mysteries are hidden in stories. If you just read the story and Abraham did this and Samson did this and Paul did this, it has not blessed you. You have to look with the eyes of the spirit then you will find the mystery behind the story that's the profit from it so if i were you and I'm, i want to do something about closed doors in my life 
I go to scripture. At least one or two scriptures. Is that true? There are many, many scriptures that show you how close doors were open. The most classic of them. I can use two doors. Number one was the door of the grave. Whether for Lazarus or for Jesus himself, it was once closed. The door of the grave for Lazarus, the tomb, was closed. But under a condition, it was open and it came out. So I will study it. Jesus himself, the door, the tomb, was closed and it was opened and it came out. Are we together? I go to Acts chapter 12 and I read there how that Peter for Peter it was even three gates that closed him and all of them open so I now begin now I found a scripture so open doors is a possibility so I will no longer be asking God do you want to open doors that question has already gone because I found it in scripture are we together and Jesus the same yesterday the moment you find it in scripture there's no need asking whether god wants to do it for this promise is for you and your children and your children's children as many as are afar off are we together now so i know that god wants to open doors now the next thing is to understand the dynamics what was done you don't you are not reading for open doors then suddenly you say let me pause a bit and read songs of solomon mm -mm. you are being distracted let me turn and read leviticus how they made the tabernacle except the holy ghost takes you there stay and study the area where you are trusting to find light in okay scene one peter was in the prison bound hand and feet is that true the doors were closed what happened the next thing the bible tells you is that prayer was made by the church unto god for him so i write i'm combining my ingredients now at least i want to know what ingredients are there first so number one i see prayer are we together i now write it down number two an angel came so i see the angelic ministry i'm writing down are you seeing it now an angel came for jesus rolled away the stone an angel came so i know that for opening of any door there is the role of angels there i expect it to be part of it i'm showing you how to make the word of god work there is a part of the equation of open doors that men cannot be involved in it takes the ministry of angels so i know what is the project to scatter that door that is open but how do you how do you engage it I've, I've written prayer now is that true i've written the angelic ministry and when they came the bible says when they tapped peter peter woke up so i see that discernment is also part of it you see that now because he had to wake up if he was asleep he would not know that his salvation had come and the bible says as they were parting peter through the doors he thought he was in a vision so you need discernment because the person god will use to open the door for you may come in a form that you may not appreciate so you need discernment now i'm writing all of these things by the time i find it now lord open my eyes in my situation now how do i combine it you are not paul you are not peter so now you are using the same ingredients but you want to make something out of it now that becomes applicable for you ah this is where the holy ghost comes you are brooding over every darkness you are causing lights to shine from darkness holy ghost is brooding over every darkness you are causing lights to shine from darkness now the assignment of the holy spirit was to make what happened in the bible happen in your life and he needs to now customize those ingredients because there are things you write there that may not necessarily be applicable and whilst you are praying how does this door open 
and the Holy Ghost can tell you begin to declare the ministry of angels you may not know what you are doing in the name of Jesus are they not ministering spirits sent to minister today that be the heirs of salvation you are speaking the word as you are speaking you are releasing their ministry now you may not know and then you are now praying and the Holy Ghost will tell you everything men will always play a role it was Jesus told men roll away the stone before he asked Lazarus to come out so those who roll stones angels can roll stones men can also roll stones are we together now they can roll it spiritually while men roll it physically and so you can pray and God will tell you send this person a text and just use honor this is the man appointed by God to roll away that stone ordinarily that person will not listen to you but because what came to you is Rema from God just before you call or you text the Holy Ghost begins to speak to him living is not profitable until you empower people the Holy Ghost is preparing. You see how he's acting it. He's preparing him to honor that text. He begins to put a thought of impacting lives. You should not. You are too wealthy to just remain at this level. And then suddenly your text comes. And honor is the key for access. Honor is a triumphant usher. It can lead you with dignity into the heart of any man and any system. Listen. And whilst you are sitting yes who is this oh i'm this and that. oh have you got a job yet tomorrow come to my office first thing in the morning and then the moment you are done with that conversation just when you want to go to bed god says no 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 in the realm of the spirit satan can hinder men you need to engage right now and in this one you are not just going to pray you've prayed in tongues already get worship song and let it be with a dance that you seal this I'm showing you how it works for people so you are now dancing and rejoicing and celebrating I will exalt you you have lifted me above my enemies and while you are doing that there are angels fortifying the Bible said the angel rolled the stone and sat on it let me see who will roll it back listen by the next day you have sent favor ahead of you and the man sees you and you step into prepared blessings and the door suddenly opens and when people come to meet you and say my god we can't believe this how how did this blessing come to your life and you tell them it's god oh it's, yes it's god oh but there are dynamics to it in the beginning god the word The challenge with many of us is we do not know how to engage the word for victory so what we do is we just know somewhere in scripture there is a verse for prosperity somewhere in scripture there is a verse for authority over demons somewhere in scripture there is a verse for this and that but the dynamics of it we do not know I want your life to so command results so command results to a degree that you will bring glory to the name of the Lord not just for the marketing of flesh my brothers and sisters please listen to me I know what I'm saying I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables you listen to what I'm teaching you by God and by grace your life will excel in a way that will make you afraid You want the anointing in your life and you just blindly go I think you are anointed pray for me no no the anointing does not start with laying on of hands the anointing starts from scripture go and search the scripture there were people who started with zero anointing and by the end of their life and their experience they were marvelously anointed start searching be like a spiritual archaeologist journey with the Holy Ghost 
how did he start i have found david my servant and with my holy oil i have anointed him aha you have found it so once upon a time david was not anointed what did david do holy ghost opened my eyes and here's what you, god will show you i have found david but it took a long time to find my servant until david became my servant oil did not come on his head the god will open your eyes i have found david but i could not anoint david the anointing is for my servants so i took david from being just david until he became my servant the journey of the cave of adulam the journey of breaking and making that's what turns david into my servant and when he became my servant he was now qualified for that holy oil ah lord what is the secret of being marvelously lifted by you and you begin to search in prayer and he leads you my son give me your heart give me your heart give me your heart lord but i've been giving you my money nonsense give me your heart give me your heart what is in your heart your reputation what is in your heart the entirety of your self-worth what is in your heart your ambition what is in your heart your sense of honor give it to me it's not saying remove something from your chest and give me give me everything and you begin that journey with him lord i do not have the power to take isaac but I give you permission to take Isaac. And God says, that's what I want. Let's begin that journey. And at the end of it, it will look like your life is a miserable life until God turns with you and says, because you have done this to me, I swear and I vow in my name that in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. You see that? At that point, you don't just walk with God by emotions again. Your sacrifice has become a covenant. This one is more than just power. This is covenant. Psalm 50 and verse 5. Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. At that point, God will swear a vow on your life and say there is no meeting you will go to that I will not be there to defend you. That one is God. It's, it's not Old Testament, New Testament. This is between you and God. By reason of your sacrifice, he will swear a vow with you. And until you get to that realm, you cannot do much for the kingdom. Many people wonder why sometimes all of these marvelous things that God does happen, doesn't matter where, doesn't matter who. It's not because I'm so much of anything important. It is because behind this you see is blood dripping blood that came from death blood that came from sacrifice once God has sworn upon you it remains so until you see his face it's a difficult thing to get God to swear a blessing over your life but if God does swear a blessing this is what our fathers taught us this is what God did for people like Ora Roberts. This is what God did for the generals. He swore a blessing. He gave, he gave William Branham a covenant that there is an angel that will walk with you. And William Branham will stand on a crusade ground with many people there and say, God told me that everywhere I stand, his angel will come. And he will remain there until the angel appears. He will say, the angel has come. And all of a sudden, spectacular manifestations of the gifts of the spirit.
this word is more than enough to bring everything to you that your life desires any other formula given to you outside this word i give you a guarantee in advance is a waste of time don't sojourn for many years only to return back to where you left the word of god let me show you something that will bless you we're going to pray john chapter 1 verse 3 please read with me everybody one two read stop all things all things prosperity made by him longevity made by him influence made by him spiritual fire and fervency made by him relevance made by him all things were made by him and without him without means outside of his participation was not anything made let me tell you what the devil is deceiving our generation into doing listen my dear people Here's what the devil deceives us into doing. This church thing is a waste of time. Just leave this thing and use your common sense and face your future. All things were made by him and outside of him was not anything made. Don't wait until you are 50, you are 60 to suddenly find out you are wrong. Learn now. If my destiny will ever be made, it has to be in partnership with the word of God. There are arrows that fly by day. There are noisome pestilences. We live in times where people have been lashed economically and they need the Lord to arise for them in ways and dimensions that not many of them know how to go about. Listen to me. My brothers and my sisters, heaven and earth will pass away. But this word you see abides forever. This is what our fathers taught us. Many of them lived, they ran this race with scripture. They were in the bush and all they had was a scripture. And from that scripture, Smith Wigglesworth found here in this scripture, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works. And that man who fixes shoes, that was all he was doing. He was a cobbler, but he found this scripture, and it turned a shoemaker into an apostle of faith. I perceive that God is no respecter of persons but in every nation in every nation whoever calls upon him or whoever serves him is accepted by him that means it is not happening because you are in Nigeria or not in Nigeria no the Lord is my shepherd if the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want why because he can make me lie down in green pastures he can lead me beside the still waters he can even restore me he can guide me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake then he says though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death my comfort is that you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me he says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies anointing my head with oil listen if your word study life has died i want you to know for sure according to the authority of scripture that your life stopped moving forward the day you close your bible i assure you on that you may have a semblance of advancement weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah is worthy to open there is a relationship between tears and closing the book when you close the book your tears begin 
the only way to weep not is when the book is opened for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed he is worthy qualified to open the book and unlock the seven seals thereof hear me this ministry you see even though god has granted me grace for unusual and uncommon encounters i have never placed my faith on supernatural encounters supernatural encounters did not create the world it was the word it doesn't matter if I go to heaven 12 times my faith will not be in heaven heaven is a place the word is God man shall not live by bread alone ah. you are here right now as you're looking at me you're saying apostle you don't know my life and you don't know my situation I don't have a helper in my destiny maybe my dad is late maybe my mom is late there is nobody to help me as i am now i don't even know how i will rise find comfort my dear ones the bible is full of people who sojourned this earth unassisted by men but when they found the word of god it transformed everything about their life spiritually there are many of us who believe that the call of god upon our lives will require certain superior levels of the anointing but you're not going to get into that just wishing i know one day the anointing will fall upon me no you have to engage the word in the beginning the word not anointing in the beginning the word not prayer prayer is a derivative of the word anointing is a derivative of the word signs and wonders are derivatives of the word return back to the place of the word place value on the word of god place your life upon it and you know that you place your life on something secured every destiny helper that is scattered around your life and is needed for your life and your destiny it is the word of god that brings them it is the magnet that will bring them and can i tell you don't ever say i am in a i am in zaria it's not true god can pick them from anywhere you believe what i am telling you anywhere go and lose the coat and bring it and if any man asks you tell him the master hath need of it We are made by the word. We live in a world where people say, I am self-made. There is nothing like self-made in the kingdom. You are demon-made and ritual-made and charm-made and yoke-made and curse-made or you are word-made. All things were made by him and without him, was not anything made listen to me the future version of you is the word of god that will make it it's not time that will make the future version of you it is the word the degree to which you believe the word great fathers like papa copeland they would tell people to carry their bible and jokingly this is my bible it is god's word to me I believe in what it says I am I can do what it says I can do and so on and so forth and it sounded childish and many matured people have not produced one tenth results because they are too matured for the simplicity of the word oh may we ever tremble at his word may his word remain ever fresh may you not treat the word of God like you treat familiar people that every time you open the Bible you don't just oh John I know this one I can even recite it till today till tomorrow till forever every time i'm about to open the word of god there is excitement in my spirit because i know my eyes are about to see and from what i see others will see too and so i am happy not just for me i am happy for the sight of others too genesis 13 we're going to pray genesis 13 from verse 14 nobody like you lord nobody like you lord oh. 
There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. I wish I had the liberty to begin to tell you the testimonies and the things that God continues to do in this ministry. It's just that because of the maturity levels of people and because of the times that we live in, sometimes it's just safe to just give glory to God and say God is doing great things. But my brothers and sisters, these are the things that will cause the ears of men to say, what is this? The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of man what God has in store for them that love him but the holy spirit is able to reveal it to us you see watch this matthew 13 i mean genesis 13 and the lord said to abram after that lot had separated from him lift up now your eyes what was the first thing he lifted not his feet his eyes and look from the place where you are not the place you want to be from the place where you are lift up your eyes from that place of poverty from that place of spiritual bankruptcy from that place of of irrelevance if i will use that expression lift up your eyes and he says where thou art look from the place where thou art northward southward eastward westward next verse for all the land which thou seest not the land which is available all the land which thou seest to thee i will give it unto thy seed anything you see will outlive you your seed must benefit from it it says for as long as you can see it i will give you in a way that your seed will also have it forever lift up your eyes see verse 16 we're reading to 17 i will make your seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall thy seed also be numbered 17 hallelujah arise now that you have seen walk through the land you don't start by moving you start by seeing walk through the land in the length of it and the breadth of it for i will give it unto you listen the problem is many people start moving and acting without seeing the assignment listen to me the assignment of the spirit of faith is to make you see what god is saying god's servant bishop david oedipo will say you cannot doubt what you see you can doubt what you hear how many of you have picked up a call to answer a call and you suspect is someone and you say who is that and he says ah your voice has changed but not what you see can you say i'm wearing white am i wearing white because you can see the same way you can see physically and it gives you confidence nobody will move to a closed door with his eyes open because you can see is that true so you know you need to open the door that's how it is spiritually and that's how it is by the word let this word become your new eyes that you see through the word if you can see it that god has said it and then you find out listen seeing it does not just mean finding it in the word seeing it also means find out the principles that commit god over that issue find out what you must do to commit god there is always something there is a participatory role that you have as far as committing god is concerned you want to be great you want to excel you want to rise beyond your status quo you want to rise beyond the limitation of your territory see and you go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. 
it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you to do right that i will exalt you above the nations of the earth deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you when he was speaking it he was not just speaking it to israelites because we are that seed the seed of abraham galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 and if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise i believe that i've been called to a life of grace a life of glory i believe it doesn't matter the witches the wizards it does not matter the orchestrations of darkness that befall the day i know by the spirit of god that in partnership with the word and in partnership with the spirit that i will live a victorious life serving the purposes of the kingdom and excelling while i do so this is my conviction you make the word of god become your frame of reference are we together now and then you commit god by walking in keeping with the principles that make it happen many of us here i wish i had the time well let's see what happens tomorrow we still have a session tomorrow many of us want to rise you want to rise out of a life of mediocrity a life of poverty a life of failure my brothers and my sisters there is a way to do it if you think the way is business think again if you think the way is just buying and selling think again no it is not what you do it's primarily who you know then what you become by reason of that knowledge then what you do from the standpoint of that becoming are you seeing now everything starts with knowledge let's round up with this scripture for tonight daniel 11 32 daniel 11 32 he says the B part but the people that do know everybody say no one more time say no say knowledge that's the beginning the ultimate goal is exploits but here's how it starts knowledge then if they know they shall be strong so they will be knowledge becoming then doing equals to exploits knowledge of god and then his ways transformation by that encounter and then the wisdom that comes from that transformed version of you you now walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise it will be equal to a life of exploits Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, I'll hear in Sanana. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, I'll hear in Sanana. That becomes your life. Listen, you will be an overflowing bank of grace when you understand this the effulgence of the beauty and the glory of god's grace upon your life let me tell you you will be the first spectator of that sight you your own life i know what i'm telling you it is true how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good you don't just do good there is something that must be in place for you to do good healing all day that were oppressed of the devil listen to me from this night's meeting i want you as we we'll pray for a few minutes make a decision that your life is not going to be the way you met it make up your mind i'm tired of giving excuses about my life i've been giving excuses it's because i'm in zaria it's because i'm this and that refuse the word of god is an advantage 
It is true. Every Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, I'll hear in Sanana. The wonder working power of the word. When the word finds expression in your heart and it turns you into a sign and a wonder spiritually you are a sign and a wonder financially every aspect of your life let me give us one scripture to end tonight this is my desire and this is my prayer i know that many of us as far as loving jesus and serving him is concerned i testify that many of us love him i give that credit to you i know by the spirit by the grace of god this is a house that loves jesus we love him in different degrees but sincerely i can stand boldly to tell the world that this is a house that loves jesus so passionately our love for jesus has been proven again and again but in addition to your love for jesus and your desire to make him known to the nations God desires that you excel in your life. He wants you to rise to a point where your life becomes a testament of God's glory. And anything short of this truth, do not receive it. Whilst you serve him, whilst you live for him, whilst you exalt his name and declare his praise to the nations, he wants your life to experience the goodness, the glory, the power of God. Because that quality of your life is also a message. Genesis 24 one genesis 24 verse 1 genesis 24 verse 1 everyone please read and abraham was old hold on that means he lived long everybody say long life and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed joshua selman in all things and the lord see it is what you see that is given not what your neighbor sees not what your family sees as far as your eyes can see the possibilities that the word of god constructs for you becomes your inheritance the portion you have seen is the portion you step into not the portion available the portion you see if all you see from the word is an excelling spiritual life that's all you will get if all you see in the word of god is a prosperous life and you don't see a spiritually vibrant life you will get prosperity at the detriment of your spiritual work if all you see in the word is divine health that's all you will get but if you see everything everything that makes god god spiritual fire vibrancy in your life vibrancy in your finances and you say god this is what i have seen he says unto you because you have seen it this becomes your inheritance let us not allow our children suffer because we did not see well son of man what seest thou the root the shoot of an almond tree he says you have seen correctly as a result of what you have seen I will hasten my word to perform it. What word? The one you have seen. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 10 to 12. The whole context is from verse 5 to 12. Jeremiah. Aside from your biological parents, aside from your spouses for those who are married believe me when i tell you it will be very difficult for you to find a single human being that loves you more than me but as much as i love you even if i feed you i can't swallow for you i can't digest it for you is that true even for patients who doctors use another means to get food to them 
when it gets to the body your body must be alive to digest it I pray for you all the time and I want you to know that every time I come and bring the Word of God like I've always done it's not because I'm looking for anything for myself no it is a passion to see that everyone can rise and that for as long as I am alive I will not sit down and watch the devil destroy anybody's life in mediocrity and make you fail and live a defeated life seated in this place are people who represent the next generation of what God is doing the same way the baton was passed to us and now we are running as faithful as he granted us as he's granted us grace it is my assignment and my responsibility under God to see to it that there is continuity to what God is doing my beloved people hear me you are greater than what you see that you are the problem is your sight every time you look at your room and you look at rain dripping every time you look at your shoe we have been taught mundane parameters look at what is happening to your spirit man look at what is happening to your mind that is the real wealth what is happening around you is temporal it will change the word of God has such a force it can superimpose upon it provided you are engaging it provided you are engaging it sitting down and merely hoping that life will evolve itself into victory for you is flattery it will not happen that way you will be intentional three prayer points tonight very quickly our time is up prayer point number one restore my fire for the word restore my fire for the word restore my fire for the word restore my appetite for the word restore my fire for the word someone is praying restore my appetite for the word don't be distracted the overflow spray following online pray man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God please pray pray heaven and earth will pass away but your word abides forever No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No one you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. Are you praying for your destiny? No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No one you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. A restoration of fire for the world beyond reading one verse per day beyond just morning devotion hallelujah please look up prayer point number two you are going to declare the word of God that you know over every aspect of your life. Don't declare your problem. Don't declare what is wrong. Every scripture, no matter how little or much you know, you are going to open your mouth, place the word of God upon your destiny and leave it there. And watch the reaction that happens. Place the word of God. Is someone declaring? 
Gentiles come to my light. Kings to the brightness of my rising. In the name of Jesus, I arise, I shine. My light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm planted in the house of God. I flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, I am fat and flourishing. My gates are continually open, never closed to receive the forces of the Gentiles. My path is as a shining light that shines ever brighter, even on to the perfect day. A thousand fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side. None shall harm me. With my eyes will I see and behold the reward of the wicked. The Lord stands by me like a mighty terrible warrior. Pray, declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. I rise up by revelation, the glory that excels, working in my life, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I go from strength to strength, from grace to grace, from power to power, strength to strength, grace to grace. I am blessed because I fear the Lord. My seed remain mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright in my life are blessed. Wealth and riches remain in my house. My righteousness endures forever. The light of God shines upon my head, shines upon my feet. Don't be tired. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Declare long life. I declare longevity. I declare the fullness of my days. I serve the Lord. So he blesses my bread and my water. He takes sickness away from me. The fullness of my days I fulfill. Goodness and mercy follow me. Goodness and mercy follow me. Goodness and mercy follow me. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me falls for my sake. Are you declaring the Lord gives me a wisdom and a mouthpiece? That no one can can say nor resist the wisdom of God is at work in my life. Favor, access to the hearts of kings, access to the hearts of nobles. Don't be tired. One or two more minutes. Declare. Speak over your finances. In the name of Jesus, I operate by the wisdom of the Spirit. I know what to do. The Lord is my shepherd. I refuse to be in one. He shall keep his angels charge over me. They bear me up on their wings. Lest I dash my foot against a stone. The Lord will deliver me from six things. In the name of Jesus, in famine I will laugh. He will deliver me from the spotted thorns of men. Because I have a covenant with the stone. I am exalted by the Spirit of God. Exalted. The power of God is at work in me. Shedding signs and wonders to my life. Jesus is glorified. In my life, Jesus is glorified. In and through this ministry, men glorify God in me. Men glorify God in me. My light so shines before men. 
that they see the good works of the Lord in and through my life and glorify the Father in heaven. Everything works in my hands. Nothing dies in my hands. I am a life-giving spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Declare from glory to glory, from grace to grace, my prayer life on fire, my words to be life on fire. I continue to translate, to translate, to contend for transformation by the Spirit of God, superior belief systems. Superior versions of myself in the name of Jesus, the gates of cities, the gates of nations, the gates of territories are open for me for the sake of His name upon my life. Don't be tired. You are the redeemed of the Lord. Say so. You are the blessed of the Lord. Say so. You are the anointed of the Lord. Say so. You are the lifted of the Lord. Say so. You are the favored of the Lord. Say so. Declare so. Proclaim so. Decree so. Go ahead and pray. The anointing of the spirit, the grace of God is mighty upon my life. Walking wonders. Walking wonders. The grace of God is at work in my life. In the name of Jesus, I'm an effulgent of the power of God. In the wisdom of God. The grace of God. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural influence. From glory to glory. By the spirit of grace. Ever loving Jesus. Ever serving Jesus. Ever living for Jesus. I have authority and dominion over principalities, over powers. I have authority, I have dominion over causes, over yokes. In the name of Jesus, no enchantment, no divination, no pronouncement, no necromancy, no enchantment with the heavens that walk over my life. I am immune by the power of the word of God. Beauty and glory, beauty and glory, beauty and glory emanate from my life. Beauty and glory, signs and wonders, ever increasing glory in the name of Jesus. The evil of the time will be far from my dwelling. The evil of the time are far from my habitation. I do not live by the sword. I will never die by the sword. I live by the word of God that live and abide forever. My body is free from sickness and infirmity. Killer diseases, you are far from me. A body has God prepared for my spirit. I live in health. I enjoy longevity. And I will not 
be silent I will always worship you as long as as long as Listen, it was written so that it would not be changed. It was written so that it would not be changed. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. Many things have been written and I believe them. I want you to leave this place this night not just saying i came to church i want you to leave this place this night with confident assurance it has been written concerning me and i engage it with understanding until my life becomes an effulgence of victory in the name of jesus christ give me one minute to make an altar call it always starts with Jesus. There are people listening to me here. You are in this auditorium. Probably you are visitors coming for the first time. There are others who have been here. And you are saying, Apostle, while the word of God was coming forth, the Lord began to speak to me about the need for a meaningful relationship with Jesus. More than religion, more than church. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is, I need to start afresh wherever you are aside from overflow three that i may just request that you move to the front of your screen if you are here or you are outside it's my joy to lead you to jesus wherever you are please leave your seat quickly and come and stand before me receive that boldness don't be ashamed are there people coming let's celebrate them i believe there has to be someone that god is speaking to god bless you god bless you celebrate them as they come those coming from outside, clear the way for them. God bless you. Don't sit back when the Holy Ghost is saying, come and join them. I believe that there are people that the Lord is speaking to. Hallelujah. Let's give one more minute. Are there people who God is calling? If you are coming from outside, please quickly, quickly make your way. Overflow three, move to your projector stand outside. And then for those who are following online, you can participate in this prayer. Let's celebrate them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much, my dear ones, for coming. I want to lead you to make this prayer. It is the greatest prayer you will ever make in your life. If there's anyone joining them, please come quickly and stand. God bless you. Lift your right hand, every one of you, and say this after me. Say it loud and clear with every sense of conviction from your heart say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus tonight i declare that i believe in you you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you were raised up for my justification this night i make jesus my savior my lord and my king i declare that i am a recipient of eternal life i also declare that i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i reign 
in life. From today, I move forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. And as many who are connecting, following from around the world, and those who are in the overflows, they have come to declare your lordship over their lives. By the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that the Lord gives you a new beginning. From tonight, you are recipients of God's life, God's grace, God's power. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that from today, you go forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken forever over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome to the family of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Now, Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kateka Post. Kate Branda Kata Bako Tosko to break a take and the The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.